Okay, we want to welcome you to our third and final session. This one will be a little bit longer. If you are sitting here and you have to leave, you can leave. I doubt if you will, but uh, you're not going to break my heart or I'm not going to judge you for it because maybe you have somewhere you have to go. But um, we're going to get this in no matter what today because I want this to be recorded. So you're at this church. You're starting to serve. You're uh, preaching. you got an anointing on you to preach the word. You you got an anointing on you to uh, uh, prophesy to do all these things. You're starting to be used by God, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the things I want to bring out here is is that pastors need to be very careful about releasing people into ministry too quick. Yeah. All right, and and that's a hard thing because if people are gifted, you want to give them opportunities. But on the other hand, if you release them too fast, there can be a spiritual flashback that happens. And uh, yeah. sometimes that can be worse than, than uh, um, not even uh, paying any attention to them at all, which is terrible, too, and letting them speak. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, I don't know the exactly case about Sabella here as far as that goes with this, uh, with this other church. I, again, this is, not, this is constructive criticism, if there's any criticism at all. I know people are different uh, and have different viewpoints about some of these things. Some of them... Um, you know, they just, the second somebody comes in, they want their gifts to operate, and so they'll just uh, put them right in there, and that's really a dangerous thing to do. That's all I'm going to say about that, because I get into that, and, I, and I'll go off on that. So, you're, you're yes. going there, you're enjoying this, you're ministering. Yes. Now, we come up to the point here, and you asked me to, whether I want to, are you talking about the stuff that came into the church, the... Yeah, I wanted to touch on that because that's when there was a, a serious shift, and and then I there okay. was a couple other things that happened. So something happened in the church that was wrong, and she was part of of, of this, and she saw it take place. And we want to try to get through this pretty quickly. Yes, uh, because we want to get up to Wisconsin. Okay? Yes. So <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. So. Um, <laughs> So what basically happened is that they, uh, th these, uh, this group of ladies convinced the pastor to check out this program that's known uh, or called Deliverance. Um, coming out of the New Age, I just instantly recognized that there is a lot of mixture and hypnosis and different things in it. And I'm, um, again, the moment that I became really born again, I had no compromise. I was not okay with the maybe this, maybe that. Uh, just because that disappeared and that person's no longer feeling their pain, that means it's Jesus. Um, I discerned it was not of God, and I actually had seen it from my, the previous church I was at and seen some weird things. So what happened is that they brought this into the church, and now all of the leaders want everyone to begin to do this deliverance. This is really interesting to me because we have an infiltration, uh, infiltration of these type of things into spirit-filled circles because the devil, <coughs> to get in a Baptist church is pretty easy, or a Lutheran church. Uh, a, a cultist sit on the boards. Yeah. Sometimes they're even, they're even the pastor. Right. They're involved in occult and Satanism and everything. Uh, I know that's hard for some people to understand, but take it from somebody who knows. But in charismatic spirit-filled circles, you know, it's harder to get in there for them. So what they have to do is make it charismatic sounding, yeah. deliverance sounding, and, and have a little bit of truth with a little bit of not truth. Yeah. So go ahead. This is what's happening. So keep in mind, you've heard enough of my testimony where there is no way that I'm going to in any way, number one, go against the Lord. Number two, risk anything. I don't care how... I don't care that there's supposed results, which, by the way, people would go in and they do, you know, this weird stuff they did. And uh, then they'd give a testimony and then, they, you know, they'd come back worse and have to keep going back. So how is that deliverance? Anyway, that aside, um, it almost split the church. A whole bunch of people left. Uh, he did not listen to counsel of other people. Um, he even, he knew I had the gift of discerning of spirits. He respected me. He knew I heard from the Lord. Um, he was a very, very, uh, protective about who he allowed to teach and who he allowed to prophesy. There was, um, not even, there was maybe three people out of 200. So that, 
So for him personally, in that way, he was very strict, but yet he did not listen. He did. He just. He didn't. And the uh, the irony is is is. Let me just mention this last thing about this is that when they got up to introduce this program, the lady uh, was, was giving accolades to this pastor, and, 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 the, and she said, no one on the entire East Coast has allowed this into their church. But no, he hello. is. So see, to me, that was a red flag, like, hello. But they turned it into, so isn't he so great to be open? So at any rate, once that happened, witchcraft got open into the church and it became like a battleground and it was very hard. At this point, me and, and many people are praying for another church. There were not any other churches uh, in my area. So I am, I am praying and fasting uh, big time at this point. And I uh, get to the point where I do leave the church. The Lord told me I'm going to end up moving you. I didn't know where he was going to move me. And I began, I'm going to do this real quick, Pastor. And I began, I was getting invitations at this point to preach and teach at different places. Um, I had done a, a ministry conference and, and I was looking for another church. And I thought, okay, this is going to be in my region. Wisconsin was nowhere on my radar screen. Most people wouldn't think about Wisconsin, right? And I thought, well, God will keep me close to my family and close to home. This is where all my connections are. This is all, you know. Um, and so I was beginning to make contacts with different people in the region. And, and I thought, well, this must be the Lord. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. And I ended up with a pretty well-known group that came in from a different uh, area on the East Coast, and they began doing conferences, charismatic conferences. I just, okay, I'm trying not to laugh. Anyway, this person, Pro prophetic conferences. This person, this person believed. Since we all have the Holy Spirit, it's okay if we all lay our hands on each other, right? So we're at these conferences, and suddenly the... the, the now, I want everybody to listen up out there in internet land. Wake up. Okay, go ahead. So, we'd, so the presence of God would be, we'd be worshiping, and everything would be going great. And all of a sudden, the leader would say, everyone, hold hands. Let's start laying hands on each other. Now, this made me very uncomfortable. I was not comfortable with this. I wasn't quite sure what to do, but it was like, what do you do when everyone's holding hands and you're the only one not? And I kind of was like, huh. Well, so, let, me, let me stop you for a second because I don't want people to be confused. If, we, if I did that in here, it would be okay because I know everybody. But if you go to some conference somewhere and they don't know everybody, that's a that is really probably not a good practice at all. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And that was the Yes, I mean because this could be anywhere from 60 up to 150 people and you know God only knows where they're from and all the different things. There was a a lady on this person's leadership team and this went on I can't remember how long maybe 2 to 3 weeks he, they were there visiting it was a regional thing he said God sent him there and all this so it was a while that we were going to these conferences every week, um, and I was participating in this, and they were starting to kind of want me on their team and all this. Well, I was, and I was praying for another church, so I thought, well, maybe, maybe, I don't know. And then this lady came over to me and laid hand. now she was a leader. She came over and laid hands on me, and now she's jerking all over the place. And you and I have talked about this. Yeah. That the holy I jerkers. never Watch know, out for them. like, because, like, you know, you said um, there was someone you talked about, Pastor Tom Ed Dufresne, who would jerk, and there are people that that happen. Not like that. And it's not not like that. But Ed, this, Ed didn't jerk like that, though. I just want to admit, I yeah. know what you're talking about. Yeah. But you hear about that, yeah. like this is something again in Christian circles. You sometimes see, you know, the manifestation of God looks different on people. You know, you really need the gift of discerning of spirits. You uh, anyway. Um, so this w woman came over and laid her hands on me, and she began to jerk, and she was doing all sorts of stuff, and I literally felt 
all this stuff come into me. And it wasn't one, it was a lot of stuff. And I almost collapsed and I went, oh no. I, and I immediately knew that it was demons. And I, um, I, I was so up, I was so upset I, I, and I was mad at myself. I was furious with myself. Let me, let me stop Sabella and because a lot of people are going to go, now wait a second. You mean in the Christian meeting, somebody, yeah, Stella and I were in, in Panama, Central America. Same thing happened to a man there. We ended up spending two and a half hours, three hours casting 37 devils or whatever it was out of him and his wife. Yeah. Okay. Stella and I were at a prophetic conference one time. And this guy gets first, he jumps up. We didn't want to be there. We told, told our, our rides, we do not want to go to this. <clears throat> but, oh, no, it's just that we're, because, yeah, you know, they were saying, everybody's going to get a prophecy. <clears throat> Whenever I see something like that, I don't want to be around it. And uh, uh, because I believe in prophecy, but not everybody's going to get a prophecy all the time. Right. And uh, so, anyway, the first thing the guy did is jump up and come over and prophesy over me. And say, thus saith the Lord, you're not going to, you're going to, you're not going to beat your wife. You're not going to beat your wife anymore. Well, everybody in the place knows that's crazy. But he laid his hands on Stella before I could get there. And she got one. And I had to take her out in the car and, and get rid of that thing. So don't think that this, but see, if you're the devil and you want to try to get in uh, uh, to uh, a church somewhere, You'd like to go to one or a, a meeting where they have no uh, decency and an order, where people don't understand spiritual things, and everybody just lays hands on everybody. Right. And I don't like them when that happens. It's dangerous. Yeah. So go ahead. So I end up, I go home. I left pretty immediately. I was... I was already manifesting things from whatever this was, and I um, began getting sick, and I was, and and I had all sorts of symptoms, and I immediately began to try to cast this stuff out of me in the name of Jesus and take authority over it, and I cast some of it out, but it was not leaving. I was like, "What is the problem here?" And once this happened, it was like a whole portal opened up. And now keep in mind, I had left my, I had just left about a month or two prior my previous church, which now had witchcraft in it. Um, and when I left there, uh, the, the pastor did not really want me to go. He, he said, I really want you to stay. I don't want to lose you. Now I kept in, and we talked about this, I kept in touch with him. Um, and was very gracious and, and honoring of him. Um, and his wife, by the way, knew that it was, uh, she witnessed to me leaving and blessed me. And we eventually got peace. And he eventually acknowledged that, you know, he realized I had to go. He, he was kind of in his flesh, you know. Um, and so that was fine. But my point of saying that is that I had no, nowhere to go. Okay. So now I don't have a church. And I've left this other church. And by the way, uh, because it took him about three to six months to work through uh, what he thought about that, I don't believe he said anything to the congregation. Mind you, I was like part of the leadership in the congregation, and so they were confused. Um, some people got offended because I got some messages from some people uh, questioning why I left. Um, so I began to deal with what some people may call... Um, Christian witchcraft, which was worse than the occultic stuff. So there was all sorts of um, uh, gossip. They were praying for me. Uh, and I began getting tormented by that. And then also uh, there was a occultic group that began to come against me and attack me and come onto our land. And they were astral projecting and burying things and doing symbols and coming up to our door and uh, doing potions and um, threatening me. Um, so all of this began happening all at the same time. And I'm fasting and praying. And a friend of mine who I love dearly, we're close to this day, uh, she kept getting a word of knowledge about Pastor Tom. She knows about this Pastor Tom in Wisconsin. A scary thing. But by the way, 
It seemed to me when I when I listened to this that there may have been some kind of this is Massachusetts. And everybody knows Massachusetts is really famous for its witchcraft. So it seems to me that maybe there was some witchcraft going on uh, that attacked the church and these people and Absolutely. Sabella and others. And uh, she probably, if you checked into it, wasn't the only one who had some of this stuff happen. Right. But um, God works in, you know, God is working. So she has these manifestations. Then the, uh, this lady tells her about me, which I guess she was watching me on the YouTube. YouTube. Thank God. And then so that planted a seed. And then what happened? So then I uh, began to pray, and I was connected with another minister at this time who is located in Florida, and my flesh wanted to go to Florida. That and, was a dog. I just want everybody Yeah, to that was a, re a real dog. No one's manifesting. Um, so so I'm, I'm thinking, Lord, don't you want to send me to Florida? I'm like, my parents yeah, go there part-time of the year. But every time I came back to Pastor Tom's videos... I got more peace and I was drawn. I was like, wow. And I, cause I had my big list about Lord, you know that I need to be in the right church and all this. And God's so gracious with us. And, um, and I listened and I was like, okay, he is a true man of God. He uh, preaches the word of God and the spirit of God. He knows about deliverance. He, he is loving. He's not judgmental. Like I was just watching and I was like, okay, Lord, and then he said, check out where he's located. And I was like, Wisconsin. <laughs> I was like, seriously? I know. Like, first time I came over, I go, what's a door county? I thought it was like where, where, where there was a bunch of fishermen. You know, they're going to be wearing high boots. And I would, yeah. So that began the journey where I, I prayed. I, and I really felt like the Lord was saying, you know, you need to. Now, I didn't know if I was going to be permanently living here, just going for deliverance, going for training. Um, or what I just knew this is where he said this is where you're gonna go and so I reached out to Pastor Tom we began to, to talk and the first thing that stood out to me about Pastor Tom is he was not afraid he didn't he didn't say oh you're a weirdo he didn't get confused he, behave over here <laughs> he, he, he didn't say um, you know oh well you know that's really horrible and that sounds terrible but I don't know what to do like some of the other situations <laughs> um, you know I, and he he and we so we had this conversation and I instantly felt like a Holy Ghost connection and I'm not being hyper spiritual about that I'm really being honest I felt like that uh, we talked a couple times I talked to Pastor Melissa instantly felt in the spirit a connection i i just i began lynette at one point we talked same thing the people i talked to from here i felt like wow they already feel like my family like there was just like um that's the only way i can describe it and i just knew i knew this is where i'm gonna go and the lord gave me a, a scripture from abraham <laughs> about leave everything leave your family leave every because this is where all my friends were my family everything that i knew leave every all of it and go to a place you've never been wow. and i was like wow lord but okay and of course i was in the middle of chaos and i you know as well but it was still to, to be fair and honest it was still very hard sure because when you're going through that kind of crisis and that kind of attack which and i you've heard i've been through some things <laughs> this was nothing compared to all the other stuff all at the same time i was like what in the world wow okay devil you're scared but i was getting beat up i didn't have enough strong people around me that knew what to do so when I got in the car the day, I remember watching the weather, and I got in the car and I began to drive away. And now, I, you know, I love my parents, you know, don't get me wrong, but the farther I drew, drove away, the more peace I got. And when I drove into Wisconsin, um, I had such peace and such joy, I knew. And when I walked, I don't know if you guys remember the first day I got here, <laughs> I've been driving for three or four days, and uh, Wednesday, Lynette came, I think it was Lynette, to meet me. And uh, I was all pumped up to go to prayer that night. 
Uh, she's like, don't you need to rest? I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, I'm ready. Let's go, you know. And when I remember coming in here and meeting, you know, all of you guys and Pastor Jennifer, I remember too. And, and I remember just, just immediately being like, wow, like this is like home. Like these are my people. Like it just, I just knew it was the Lord. Amen. So she came and then uh, talked to me about what was going on there. And uh, we arranged to have some sessions with her as far as deliverance goes. Now, we, from your point of view, you don't remember everything in the Not sessions. Not all of it, no. Uh, because that's normal. But uh, I was there, um, and Melissa was there, and Stella was there for every session, I think. Right? right. You weren't there for every session, but mo a lot of them. And then... Uh, we did have uh, Sister Linda help us one time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, Pastor uh, Linda. She came in and helped us and didn't know what to think. But anyway, she learned this as uh, a lot of, <laughs> a, a lot through that. Um, and so when we got in these sessions, you know, it was it was like the wild, wild west shootout. And, uh, you know, it's not always like that, but it was in this particular case. And if you've never seen anything like that, it can be shocking, and people it can freak people out, and, and it can even scare people. So I understand why people probably don't want to get involved in it. But what, uh, what did you feel, Sabella, was the difference between not trying to point attention to us here? It's the Lord. We thank God for what he does. But what, what was the big difference between us and our abil ability to help you and maybe other folks, so people know. Yeah, um, the biggest difference uh, was kind of what I touched on earlier. One, you weren't afraid. You weren't intimidated and you weren't confused. Like you knew the scripture, you had experience with deliverance, and you were very loving. Like I, I didn't ever feel, because this was a concern of mine, and it's a legitimate for anyone out there, um, obviously. And the devil certainly is going to attack you in that area too. But it's a legitimate natural concern to feel weird about going in like, okay, really? Like I'm having demons cast out of me? Like this isn't an everyday, you know, experience, hopefully. Um, so going in there, um, you guys made me feel like a normal person. Like I didn't feel like the leper that, you know, um, you can feel like. You already feel that way to a certain extent because of all the craziness that's happening and the devil's attacking you so much and it's very bizarre i mean it just is but you guys um i remember there was different time different breaks we would take breaks because it was exhausting <laughs> at times and we would joke and we would laugh we, there's a lot of laughing yeah. in my deliverance uh, yeah. sessions we we laugh we joke yeah. even when the the demons manifest sometimes i make fun out of it yeah i mean i found myself because laughing it's like <laughs> that one of them, I can't remember something that was calling himself the octopus or something. Yes. I couldn't. Yes. I had to deal. With, I had to have some fun with that. And so anyway, uh, we went Sorry. through. We went through like six or seven of these sessions until we felt like she was uh, helped enough to where she could handle most of this herself. And if she ever needed more, we would do it. But here's the thing about it: you don't want to quit because. We, we would have a session, and uh, maybe Melissa or my wife would go, do you think that's enough? And I'd say, no, we need to have another session. I just knew inside we need to have another session. And sometimes that's the way it is. It's kind of like part of our ministry. And so I would like to train people for this because I know that William Brannon, is, uh, I mean, uh, excuse me, A.A. Um, a. A. Allen, I was watching him in his tent and a lot of it was inner city, and there's a lot of problems. And the way he did it is he had them all, they were being tormented. He had them all stand up, which is about half, almost all the crowd. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they would go to a specific tent. They wouldn't do it in front of the cameras because uh, it would have been mass hysteria in there. So they had him go to a specific tent, and he had a whole team trained to go in there and minister. And then he'd go help, too. And Oral Roberts used to do kind of the same thing. And uh, so... You know, one of the things that I've I've enjoyed is being able to help train some people for this, so that we have more than just myself and my wife. And Stella, she's an interesting person because 
Stella, every 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 time we have a, a deliverance session set up, basically she don't want to go. I don't like that. But then the thing is, the second she gets in there, she's like the wild woman of Barnia. And she just attacks these things and 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 boy, I tell you what, I, I just I basically just go and, and uh, you know, go have a drink of water, have some coffee and let them handle some of it. Um it was the same way with Melissa, as sweet and kind as Melissa is. There's another side to her. And the devil sees that side. And so uh, we are strong. You have to be strong. Yeah. And you have to be bold. Yes. And you have to be, know who's in charge. I'm just giving you a few things you need to understand about this. Number one, I'm in control, not the devil. Yeah, same. Um... Number two, you have to be bold, boldly compassionate, but bold. And that means strong, and sometimes you raise your voice a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, and you have to. You have to let them know who's boss and that they're going to come out and they don't have a choice. Number three, you have to have the gifts of the Spirit in operation sometimes. And it's real important. We had a lot of the gifts of the Spirit in operation. In fact, I don't know if Sabella really knows this, but I'm going to tell, I'm, I'm going to tell her something. There's times where Sabella was delivered from things in service when the anointing was flowing, and that happened there. So God was doing it. He's always working. And uh, uh, so, her, she, but she was one of these people, for whatever reason, uh, the enemy would, would make a lot of noise and do things and say things and try to throw us around. You know, Sabella's strong enough. But um, we will not, I never let the devil act up, do I? No, you don't. You, have to, you see a lot of times the devil will act up and it's almost like they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. I stop it and I won't let it happen. Mm -hmm. Some okay? people talk to demons. Yeah, they talk to them and get information, name, address, and phone number. <laughs> don't ever do that either. You have to be stronger than they are. Yeah. You have the Lord on the inside of you. And the next thing I do when, I, when we pray in there, I'm always asking God to send his angels. Mm -hmm. Because when the angels are in there, the demons see them. And I said, there's more of us than there is of these demons and, and the devils. And so you really got to know who you are in Christ. You got to know scriptures relating to uh, Satan being a defeated foe. And you have to believe that stuff, not here. Yes. No offense to Sabella, but a lot of people, they have it here, but they don't yeah. have it here yet. Yeah. That was a lot of the problem. Yeah. You can't just have something floating around up here. It takes a while to get that into your heart. Yeah. Especially when you're going through this right, especially cycles when you have the of just symptoms. crazy stuff. It's like it's like being uh, having a sickness when you're when you got pain in your body. It's hard to believe God. Harder to believe God sometimes, and so you know because you got all these symptoms and you know it's really difficult to sit down and and just get serious with it. So anyway, she was um, really great. We've had other people that uh, have come up here. And have been delivered. Some of you see have seen some of it, and it's it. To our church, we're not a weird church. It's not like every week we have this. I want everybody to understand. It's not like every week somebody barks or, except for maybe Norm, but that's kind of normal. Um, but when there is an issue, and we have people that sometimes travel a long ways to come up here. My wife and I minister to people from Texas and Chicago and New York and. I can't remember a lot of places. We want them to receive the benefit. And here's the thing that I wanted to I want to stop with. Sabella was willing to do whatever it took. And if you look in the Bible, you find out that that's the people that got set free. When everybody else was telling them to shut up, they wouldn't shut up. When the friends brought the the guy, they they went down through the roof. They went up on the they did whatever it took. And so one of the things my wife and I are so concerned about with the Christians nowadays is they'll come for a while and then they, they give up and they, they don't show up to church. You need to be in church a lot. Why? The anointing is flowing. You never know when something's going to happen that's going to help you. In fact, you get help sometimes you don't even know it. So it's vital to be in church. And I, you know, I understand people got to go on vacation. Sometimes they have to work. But you know what I'm talking about. As much as possible. As much as possible. And I'm just going to say this. This may make people angry with me. Uh, who cares? 
I'll just turn them over to Sabella. And here, here it is. I never took a job that made me work on Sundays. I just wouldn't do it. When I was looking for uh, work, legitimate, if that was the case, I just went to the next place. Because I had priorities. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people need to make that priority and that change in their life. Because if you're not in church, you're going to eventually not go, you're going to eventually leave the Lord probably. With all the stuff that's going on in the world today. Yes. Can I, is that all right to say? Absolutely. I know you guys all amen me because you're here. It's the ones that may be watching that aren't here. They make excuses. She didn't make any excuse. She wanted to be with the Lord. She wanted to be in his presence. And that is very powerful. And God's going to use her mightily. Now, here, here's what's going to happen. The devil's going to rue the day that he messed with Sabella. Because when this starts happening, she may be one of our team. And, and I'll tell you what, she's going to just wear the devil out. See, That's the way that works. Yes. If you've been tormented, Thank you, Jesus. you become the tormentee. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way that works. And so she's still, you know, every once in a while she'll call me and say, you know, I'm having a hard time. I can't sleep, this and that and the other thing. And I say, well, join the club. That's part of spiritual warfare. Yeah. We all have some of that. Yeah. But what you don't want is a bunch of torment going on, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you want to be able to torment the devil. As an yes. example, I woke up and I had a, a guy in my room. I think he asked for projected. It looked like a little guru. Yeah, I'm ser I'm serious. You ever have yes. a guru up here? Yeah. You have? <laughs> well, anyway, I went like this. I, I got up and looked at him. I didn't even have to say anything. He just left. Because they know if you know. Yes, yes. That's the main thing right here. This is the difference. They know if you know. Yes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yep. They know if you know. So... I know, and that's why I'm used that way. Yeah. Um, and we want we got to train a bunch of people to be used that way. How many know many people have these needs? So I'm just going to go ahead and say to anybody that's watching me today, right now, in this session, please go back and watch the other sessions. But we're going to pray, and Savella's going to lead us through a prayer. If you don't know Jesus, you really don't know him as, your, as Lord, not just Savior, Lord. You need to make that commitment today. We are all, we all have made Jesus Lord, or we wouldn't be yes. here in this church. People don't come to my church that haven't made Jesus Lord. Right. You'd be, I might torment you, you know. <laughs> they were joking about it. They said, we're going to make a t-shirt out saying, we survived another Thomas Terry, um, you know, meeting. meeting. <laughs> um, because sometimes it can be a little bit intense. But here's the thing. Today... You have to have the intensity of the gospel, yes. the uncompromising word, yes. uncompromising move of the spirit. And if you don't, you're not in that place you need to get there because that's where the help is. Yeah. That's where Jesus is going to come and help you in places like that. Amen? Amen. So why don't you pray with them, Sabella? And so uh, those of you that want to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, say this prayer with me right now or with us. Father God, Father God, I thank you. I thank you for your son Jesus Christ. For your son Jesus Christ. That he died for my sins. That he died for my sins. And right now, and right now, I ask you, Lord Jesus. I ask you, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. And my life. And my life. And be my Lord and Savior. And be my Lord and Savior. Make me new. Make me do. I turn away. I turn away. From any wicked ways. From any wicked ways. Father, help me. Father, help me. To go forward in your ways. To go forward in your ways. I want to know you. I want to know you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer, please let us know that you did that. I want to thank Sabella for taking the time to come and share her testimony. It was very great, and uh, she, was, she was very honest and open, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate everybody being patient. I know it's 12 o'clock, it's lunchtime, and I'm hungry too. Amen. And so I'm going to give you the charismatic uh, uh, 
Be warmed, be filled, be gone. Till next time, God bless you. <laughs>